we have the final result here. So I'm gonna go with more acetone and clean it up slowly, but basically that's what it's gonna look like. What is going on guys, it's Toby here, and today we're going to be painting the C8 engine cover rapid blue. So this is gonna go on my LT2 intake manifold that I recently just ported. And just because Sully is damaged right now and had a minor accident, doesn't mean that we are gonna stop doing the mods. So we're gonna be painting this today and I'm gonna take you guys through the process. How you doing little Leo? So the accident was really unfortunate. We can't change the outcome. I'm getting with the insurance and the car is going to the body shop, but we gotta go ahead and paint this engine cover cause it's gonna look really cool with the LT2 intake manifold. But go ahead and take a look at this color right here. So this is rapid blue and it's paint matched whatever in a spray can form. So we're gonna be using this along with the base coat right here, which is obviously primer, and then we have a clear. This clear is actually kind of so I don't think we're gonna be using that, and I wasn't supposed to say that, I think we're gonna be using engine enamel clear right here, which is high heat resistant. Don't mind the mess on my bed, I gotta put all my clothes away, but we're actually gonna be using this VHT engine enamel primer, so it's gonna be a little bit more heat resistant than this regular primer right here. Why are you bugging out, Leo? So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and grab the ported intake manifold. I honestly probably should have filmed the vlog of picking it up because we were messing around in the FRS, driving it hard and that type of stuff, but I did get it ported by Porting Solutions and it looks really good. Let's go grab it from Sully. So you guys are gonna see her all messed up. Apparently you guys said that I accidentally put my address on the internet, but honestly I've done that like 20 times now, so it is what it is. I'm pretty sure everybody knows where I live, so. It sucks that I got into this car accident because I was supposed to be full bolt-on by literally Sunday and I was gonna run the car down the strip and hopefully run on 11. So we're really postponed now, but I am picking up Sally on Monday and I think today is Saturday. So only two more days until we see that carbon hood look and it's gonna be crazy so obviously I can't be installing mods in the middle of an insurance claim but the car runs perfectly fine it drives fine the only thing that doesn't work and I may have said this already is the AC because the condenser got completely destroyed but I don't know man this is like easily eight or nine thousand dollars in damage if I had to take a guess we'll see on Monday though when I get the official quote we have no damage to the back of the car and if we open it up right here, oops, I need to throw out some trash, but we have the police report incident of the accident. And here is the ported intake manifold. Why is this car like spazzing? So this is the ported intake manifold. This was opened up to 93 millimeters. And then the runners were also opened up as well. Can't really see in this lighting right here, but I'll show it when I get upstairs. As you can see, no airbags went off in that accident either. So it was very, very low impact, 20 miles an hour. So I explained the porting advantages and why you do it in the first place. So basically you're opening up the snout right here, which is connected to the throttle body and everything. So you're pushing more air through the intake manifold, which in turn obviously allows for more horsepower to be generated because more air is more horsepower. The stock, the LT2 intake manifold comes with an 87 millimeter ported throttle body. But if we go ahead and look at this right here, that is like opened up to 93 millimeters. So I'm putting the 95 millimeter LT5 ported throttle body on here. You can really see how these runners were opened up. I need some light. So where's my phone? Now I think you can actually see how it was like opened up with a Dremel. And I took it to Porting Solutions in Miami. So I was dropping this off when I got into the car accident. I mean, it is what it is, but this is gonna be sick when Sully is all fixed up and ready to go. We grab this. This is what I was talking about. This is gonna go on the intake manifold. So let me switch that around real quick. This hole was opened up to fit this blade right here. So whenever it opens, it's gonna make more power. I think it's like this. Yeah, so it's like that, but you need enough clearance for this blade to open up and that's what we did right here. So we can push way more air through there. This is painted all rapid blue and everything. It's gonna go on top of here, something like that. So it'll look super cool and it'll match up with the color of the car. Honestly, I was gonna go ahead and attempt to try and paint up this Corvette thing black, but it's not gonna come off unless you rip it off because they literally put adhesive with it. I thought it was gonna be held by some screws, but obviously they didn't do that. So we can't use it. So the way that I'm getting the Corvette thing off, if you guys are looking to do this yourself, is I'm putting a key in there and lifting it. Not really worrying about scuffing up the engine cover because like I'm sanding it down and painting it anyways. So like literally who cares? Adhesive is actually kind of dog crap. So I am literally peeling it back with minimum effort, just like slowly going like this. 
and it is all coming off. Don't tell me there is a mounting point there. Okay, there wasn't. Good. So yeah, this is gonna be a long and drawn out process, but the next step is to sand it down with like, I don't know, a thousand grit or 800 grit. I'm not entirely sure. 800 might be a little bit more rough and not as fine. A thousand plus seems like it's for like giving a nice finish. Wonder if I have any sort of masking tape because instead of painting the whole thing blue, I could just put masking tape right here and keep this black. So I'm gonna go look for some. Looks like I do have some masking tape, but I don't know if this is gonna be thick enough for this job. So I might use the clear tape. Masking is super simple, but you guys probably know that. You just tape it off and then you're gonna go with a knife and cut out the excess. So you obviously don't wanna be covering what you wanna spray. So we have this very distinct area right here that needs to be sprayed. Sorry about that, I was waving the camera around, but this area needs to be sprayed and the rest of it needs to stay black underneath the tape. So we're gonna go ahead and cut it now. All right, where's this knife? I've got a pretty sharp knife. Probably should use an X-Acto knife, but I don't know where it is. We just moved, so big rips to that idea. I don't know. We're just gonna send it on this kitchen knife, this steak knife. Not even gonna lie, this is like the most difficult part. So you have like all these ridges that come up like this and trying to cut it with a knife is just a pain in the butt, but we'll slowly get it. I'm trying to like make indents slowly and cut it out, but it's taking quite a long time. I highly recommend the X-Acto knife. So thankfully my sister had one. Great, it just broke. I don't even know how that happened. I was trying to say before the X-Acto knife broke was that it gives you way more precise cuts. So I'm going in there right now and just cleaning it up real nice and making sure that all the tape is clear of the areas that I want to be painted because I don't want it to turn out jank and uneven. So it's a very slow process, but you just go and cut out tape slowly. So since everything is masked off, I'm scuffing now with this, which is like 800 grit. Yeah, so I confirmed it, it's from 3M. And sorry for the bad lighting guys, but this is like the only spot that I can do this in. So I'm gonna slowly go with the sandpaper and just scuff it up. So something like this, you just rub really fast, but obviously I need more than two hands to do this while filming. So I'm gonna have to put the camera down probably as scuffed as I'm gonna get it so I went at it with the sandpaper and now I'm gonna go ahead and get some isopropyl alcohol just to wipe it down and clean the surface to make sure that that paint adheres correctly so you scuff it and my cat just scared me big time but you scuff it so that you have like a better surface for the primer to bond to I'm pretty sure really should have done this in the daylight but I'm going right now with some isopropyl alcohol and I'll show you guys in just a second so that's a lot of the dust that I just sanded off right there and I'm just gonna keep slowly going until all of it is cleaned off and then we should be set to put on some paint. I'm swinging the camera around like crazy, but once again, this is really difficult to film and do this at the same time. Shake up this VHT engine enamel primer and we'll be set and ready to get to spraying. I need to put on my mask that I have right there, but I need to also ask someone to come out here and film this because I'm going super slowly, 50-50 overlap. I explained this in the painting the caliper vlog, but we do have like half a coat of primer on there right now, and it's gray. Now I know it may be difficult to understand me, but the whole reason why I did it on this box is because I can rotate it and get coverage on every side. So I've done about one layer of primer on here, pretty much. Just gonna finish this up right here. And this is how I always sprayed. This is how I was taught to spray was 50-50 overlaps. And we're gonna move to the back, so we need to rotate the box and get that ready. I'm just about done with the primer here. It's actually turning out really cool. If you guys were ever wondering what Nardo Gray is, that's what this color is. So it's just pretty much primer with a clear coat on it. I need to get like in, so I might have to spray it this way, which is a little bit sketchy. I'm gonna relax for 10 to 15 minutes before that dries. I thought there was paint on the camera. So that's not good, but there wasn't. So I'm just gonna chill for a second and then we'll go back out there and continue. So this should be dry, but I wanted to do one more inspection just to make sure that everything was covered equally because when it's dark out, it's kind of hard to see. And I do see some areas that need respraying real quick before we go on to the rapid blue. So I might just give it one more coat all the way around yeah it's probably gonna need one more so i just finished up with spraying some of that blue but my only concern here is that i'm gonna run out so i might have to chill out a little bit maybe resupply because it does look like i'm about to run out of this paint honestly it turned out pretty good i'm just gonna let it dry and then tomorrow we're gonna hit it with a clear these are like the last little sprays that i'm gonna give it just so it's nice and thick but i did three coats total of rapid blue and now we're gonna let it dry like I said a second ago. So I will catch you guys 
tomorrow when we do the clear during the day. Boom, just like that it's the next morning and we're gonna finish up with the engine covers. So we sprayed all the blue. Sorry guys, I have gum in my mouth. But now we have to do the clear coat. So we're gonna finish up with that and then I'm probably gonna head to the gym. So yeah, that sounds like the plan. I think we're gonna do two or three layers of clear on top of the rapid blue. You can see all the tourists out there, but it's actually really windy, which isn't good for painting. But I set up this chair right here to kind of block it. Here's what we have so far. So the rapid blue looks really, really good. I mean, there's no texture. Honestly, it looks awesome. Any texture that you see right there is how the actual engine cover is because it is grainy, but I tried to sand some of that out. Now it's time for some clear. So we're gonna be using this engine enamel clear right here. And I think I'm gonna put two coats on. Yeah, two sounds good. So it should be set and it'll make it glossy. Right now it's a little bit matte. Also, let me just state this. This is definitely not the right respirator for doing this job. You want something that has filters on the side, but this is better than nothing, I guess. It might actually be more harmful. It might trap more of that stuff being sprayed, but I don't know. I would rather have a mask on than not have a mask on at all. So let's get started with this. Gotta shake it up. Like I just said, this is gonna give it more of a glossy finish and it's also gonna remove some of that like flat looking paint and just give it more definition along with some protection. So I already sprayed one, but the wind is really, really bad. Like probably not the most ideal thing to be spraying in, but I'm gonna get these vents just to make sure they're covered up real nice. Look at my cat, she's going crazy. Yeah, and then I gotta move the box to the side and get that side. So we've got one more layer of clear coat and then we're drying it out. So I'm gonna wait like four or five hours and we'll take off the masking tape to show what the contrast looks like between the rapid blue and the black that I left masked off. So I'm done now and all I have to do is be patient and let it dry, but I did contain all the overspray by surrounding it in boxes. Now what you guys see on the ground is like paint dust. So if you get paint dust, it's actually super easy to clean up. Excuse the nasty feet because I'm not wearing shoes, but basically as you can see it's like completely wiping off So that's nothing to worry about as long as you don't actually spray spray paint on the floor or on like surrounding furniture Then you're gonna have a problem. So don't spray make sure that you have like a good masking option Usually you can use some like tarp or something like that or plastic wrap, but I just used these boxes and it worked. So we're gonna be leaving you for just a second here, all right? We'll be back, buddy. But while this dries right here, the engine cover, my family and I are gonna go look at a house and I'm gonna take you guys along because we actually don't really like living here at this apartment because of the people here and the issues I've had with the cars, just like constant complaints. So we're gonna go check it out. My parents already left and I'm gonna go jump in the busted up Camaro and we'll meet them there with no AC. So it's been super hot. Go ahead and say it's gonna be a good six to 8,000 in damage at a minimum. I know the crash bar is bent too. So they're gonna have to cut that off and re-weld one back on. And then I get Sally back with the carbon fiber GT500 hood tomorrow. So that's gonna look sick. But once I get back here, I'm just gonna take like the masking tape off and we'll show the reveal of the engine cover and compare it to the color of rapid blue i think we're here now my friend joseph actually lives up here so that would be cool if i moved near him so we could chill all the time when he's back home from school but I'm trying to find the one what is it 401 did i pass it uh, every time i look back at that car it's painful but here we are at the house now it's like a what do you mean why am I filming this? Because I want to see. It looks like a garage where I can actually do stuff and not get in trouble. That would be awesome. Close that door and nobody would even see it. You like this? Yeah, it's nice. You don't get harassed by people. But not much water, you. Yeah, so what? The beach is right there. We surf there all the time. Yeah, you. but I can't look at water. Yeah, but you walk. I love to look at water. Well, you would be. <laughs> when are you feeling it? This is nice. Are these new? Mm -hmm. These houses are brand new. brand new. No, she didn't. She didn't claim anything. Didn't. No, I claimed this room. Too late. I'm the older sibling. That's what happens when you're late. You lose, you lose. 
Look at the backyard here. So you have a pool, you have a grill to the left. So this would be a lot nicer than being at the apartment. I like the apartment, it's really nice, but I just don't like the people that live there. They're like super conceited and that type of stuff. And they always have something to say. They're in everyone's business and you literally have zero privacy. So, I mean, going from a house, I always lived in a house to go into the apartment was like the pretty much a major transition where you lost all your privacy. Like you can't do anything there without everyone knowing about it and everyone complaining about it. Let's get in this car without destroying the door. I think it's about to absolutely pour, so I did further caulk up the trunk to make sure that it was waterproof with those OEM holes from the spoiler, but this is what the houses look like. So there are three floors. I probably showed that in the video. Yeah, I mentioned that there were three floors. And uh, one more thing, I did notice that the fender liner is being completely ate open, like on that side of the car, on the passenger side because the wheel is rubbing up against it. So that's not good at all. That's not good. <clears throat> you guys probably heard that thunder cracking. I left the freaking engine cover on the balcony. So I hope it doesn't get blown off. It's about to start raining really, really hard. Let's get back as fast as possible, but as safe as possible. Cause I'm not trying to repaint that thing. Please God don't get ruined or freaking flung off the balcony. Back at the apartment and thankfully the rain and the wind didn't blow the engine cover away, but we're literally peeling this back right now. This is like the most satisfying part of the entire process. Fun fact, so there was a storm like that one time and all this stuff went flying off the balcony and somehow it didn't break and we found it in a bush. But that is a story for a different time. So I got all the tape off. There is a little bit of overspray because my masking job was an A1 obviously. So what I'm doing is just going with some acetone and seeing if it'll wipe off on the edges. But if it doesn't, it's really not a big deal. It doesn't bother me. I didn't expect the job to be imperfect. And I'm also taking like the X-Acto knife and scraping up the parts of painted tape that's on there that's like literally stuck in there. So it's just like a very slow process, but this right here is all tape that I need to like slowly cut back. And I'm also being careful not to scratch it up at the same time. So I just peeled that other side and overall I'm super satisfied. We did have a little bit of overspray because my masking was kind of lazy. I'm not even gonna lie, like that's very important to maintaining a super clean job, but kind of skipped over it. It was dark, so I mean, whatever. I'm still pleased with the result. It looks really, really good. Get that nice little contrast between the black and the rapid blue. Drum roll please. We have the final result here. So I'm gonna go with more acetone and clean it up slowly, but basically that's what it's gonna look like. So I'm not a professional painter, but I think I did a pretty decent job for an amateur. Let's go downstairs and show what it's gonna look like compared to Sully and in the engine bay. I wanted to show it on the actual intake manifold before we go downstairs and show it on the car. So let's put this on here without scratching anything. Very slow, nice and slow, lower it down. And yeah, that looks sick. I cannot wait to get this car full bolts on after we get her repaired. Really unfortunate what happened, but it is what it is. I think I need to head to the gym after this. Not even gonna lie. I need a good uh, leg day. I've been hitting legs more often, getting super strong in them. How closely does this match the color of the car? We'll see in just a second. Yeah, that's pretty close. I'm not even gonna lie. There is a little bit of a difference in primer. So this one might be a little faded. And like, if you use darker primer, you get a different final color but that is super, super close and it's gonna look dope sitting underneath that hood. So you got the satin black hood, which I am keeping. And then once you like literally open it up, which we'll do in a second, we'll open up the busted car and pop the hood and I'll, sh and I'll show what it looks like on top of the engine. I'm gonna take this and slowly place it on top right here. And that'll give you a representation of what it'll look like. That looks seriously dope. So that is a major upgrade. I don't regret doing that. You can call it what you want. But I think it looks really cool. And with that LT2 intake manifold, it'll look seriously, seriously dope. So this is the last look. It looks really, really good, like I said before. And I mean, I'm just amazed. Like it couldn't be a better match. So if you guys wanna find this touch-up paint, it is on Amazon. I will link it down in the description below or I'll tag it in the products, but I'm gonna take this off and we're gonna show you guys how busted this hood is when you try and close it. So I'm gonna pull it down right now, all right? Yep, it doesn't close. So you have to like literally slam it down to make it close. Actually picking up this vlog a few days later, like there's literally not much else to do besides painting that engine cover. I'm still waiting on Sally. It's actually Monday and I was supposed to get Sally back already, but I guess I got postponed. 
But what I was talking about in regards to the caulking that I put in the trunk to waterproof and everything, this is what I did. So I just put that in there and that's basically just gonna make sure that all these trunk holes that were left over from when I did the ZL1 wing. But basically, we're gonna pick up the vlog by going to the gym. So I'm gonna pick up my boy, Max. Let's go head over there. Out here with Max and uh, we're gonna hit some bench real quick. Well, we actually already did three or four sets and I don't know if this is gonna get copyrighted because we have music playing here, but I'm gonna hit my last set. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't. I look, he didn't want to do that without you spotting me. <laughs> I was like, nah. I mostly use social media for memes, bro. <laughs> I funny wave. So we're actually almost done here, but I'm gonna hit up some peck fly real quick and I'm gonna give you the camera again, Max. We're just about done here. We hit some incline on the Smith machine, 160, and I'm toast, man. Like, I'm so tired. Toast. Yeah, I almost failed on the last rep. Not even gonna lie, but probably gonna dip out of here now. You don't like doing four or five reps, do you? Nah, I only go above eight. Like if I'm not getting above eight, then I don't like doing it, but I'll just do it for this sake. Doing one last drop set. So he's gonna get like four or five, then we'll strip the rate. Or he might get more, I don't know. Can't even speak, I'm out of breath. And this is what I mean by drop set, just in case, if you guys don't know, strip the weight and keep going immediately after you fail. So it's all to failure. No specific rep count. Got it, Max? <laughs> Almost failed that one. A video, and we're gonna show the difference in lighting right now, but look at this, all right? That's with low exposure. We're exposing the fitness industry right now. And then you turn up the exposure to normal, and you look half the size. Literally. And then you'll see it even more on the computer, bro. Darken it, yeah. You look way, like you have more definition. Bigger, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Flex, dude. Dude, I'm, I'm gonna show you this, and you're gonna be like, Like it's just all lighting, bro. And there's like better ways to flex too, which is nuts. <laughs> the Ziz pose, you know Ziz? You gotta know Ziz. Just left the gym, and if you guys want like a more in-depth split for anything, just let me know in the comment section below, cause I can teach you guys how to diet, how to get big. But I just wanted to mention that while the Camaro is getting fixed, the boys and I are going to London to see the freaking Ford GT replica. So that's gonna be crazy. They also have some Daytona coupes, and we're leaving August 2nd to August 8th, so right after Mustang week. It's gonna be nuts though. Get ready for the London vlog. I mean, actually vlogs, because we're gonna be vlogging multiple days there, and it's gonna be non-stop car stuff, and if any of you guys are from London and wanna meet up with me, let me know. So we're just basically gonna take Soli in on Wednesday. There's not much else to update with, and I mean, it really sucks, the situation, but we're gonna make the best of it, come back with that ZL1 bumper. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it and wanna see more gym content, let me know in the comment section below, but with that, I'll see you in the next one.